turn on the recording and uh, we'll, we'll start. Um, okay. Uh, thank you for attending our QuickBooks uh, uh, webinar, QuickBooks to uh, NetSuite webinar. And um, just initially as a kind of an admin, make sure everybody can hear and see the presentation <coughs> clearly. Otherwise, uh, we would recommend that you log off and log back in. Uh, I have talked to my colleagues, and they can they can see the uh, they can see what I'm presenting, and they can hear me. So uh, I don't think the problem is with uh, me or the Zoom. So if you're not if you're not hearing that, uh, please log out, log back in. Okay. Uh, so uh, our agenda. As it's presented, we, we are scheduled to, to do this for about a half an hour. And I want to thank you all for joining this webinar and on the steps involved in migrating from QuickBooks to Oracle NetSuite. As the agenda shows, we will be looking at our clients' reasons to move from QuickBooks, the benefits derived from the migration. The client will also provide tips and hints that he and his company learned as a result of the migration. Lastly, we will discuss what lies ahead for them now that they have been live for a while. Finally, we will open up the floor to you, the attendees, to see if you have questions for CTR and Chris. For the sake of time and continuity, we will not be answering questions during the discussion, but if you have questions, please feel free to include them in the Q&A section, and we will address them at the end of the webinar. Or if you prefer, you can address them to me at dkenny at ctrworld.com and I will get back to you with the answers. Uh, I do, uh, one of my colleagues will be monitoring the Q&A session just to make sure that uh, we can accumulate those questions and that we have time at the end to answer your, your concerns. Okay, um, introductions. Uh, my name is Dick Kenny. I've been in the ERP world for about 20 years both as a user and then as a consultant. I have a background in accounting and was a controller of a company that implemented Oracle EBS many, many, many years ago. Um, I have worked for CTR for a little bit more than 10 years, assisting clients in implementing implementations and ongoing support. Uh, my, my panelists, uh, I'm so lucky to have Chris Soto uh, here. Uh, I've known Chris for many years, like me, he has years of experience working with many applications, both as a user and within the IT support role. He is very hands-on and has no problem rolling up his sleeves to make things happen. He has experience with large Oracle EBS environments, that's where I met him, as well as small starter environments that he's, our, he's currently a client that we have uh, that, that's using NetSuite. So he has experience both with very large and very small organizations. Chris was instrumental in taking his organization from an on-premises application to the cloud for both back office and front office applications. Uh, Chris, would you like to say anything else about yourself? Oh, you did just fine, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, okay. Um, so uh, I'm just gonna start off with telling you who we are, we being CTR and why you should listen to us. CTR has been in the business in the business consulting and technology space for about 22 years, and we've seen just about every configuration and combination of business system. For example, we've we've worked with people who are, are have implemented and supported PeopleSoft, Oracle EBS, Tableau, Magento, Azure, AWS, etc. Our consultants have over 15 years of ex of experience in working with and supporting business applications such as NetSuite, one of the reasons why you're here, as well as Oracle Cloud ERP. And we've also had a, uh, a lot of experience in, in integrating e-commerce and business intelligence applications into those applications. We have functional development and support employees located around the globe that can provide you with 24 seven support for our clients. Uh, we're, we're always quite proud of the fact that we have 100% client retention. Um, it's come with, uh, it's because we focus on that, uh, making sure that our clients are using their applications wisely and are, are progressing as the, especially as uh, NetSuite and Oracle Cloud ERP progress. Let's 
we, here are some of the industry verticals that we work with during our time in business. We have a strong focus on best business practices. So not only do you get the technical expertise that you need, but we can also make sure that best practices are sewn into your business systems and processes. We firmly believe that the key to laying a foundation for business growth is standardizing where you can while extending your, your system to take advantage of your core competencies. To do this, you need to have strong industry and application experience. We feel we can offer both. You can see in the listings of our application knowledge, pretty much it, it reflects a strong ERP environment from finance to supply chain to business intelligence and e-commerce solutions. Without, without any one of those, you really don't have an enterprise-wide application, but we feel comfortable that we can offer you solutions in that, in that regard. So my next slide is really talking about Ylopo. Ylopo is Chris's company, and it's one that he is involved in pretty much every day, uh, day in and day out. But uh, I would, I'll let Chris introduce Ylopo and talk about uh, some, of it, some of its origins, what it does, and all that. Chris? Thanks, Dick. Um, again, I'm Chris. I'm the founding CTO here at Pilopo. I'm one of three partners. And we, we started the company in 2015. Wilopo, if you're wondering why the name, it's, it stands for, or it's actually Monopoly, the last five letters of Monopoly backwards. We're in the real estate tech space. Um, we like to say we're turning real estate on its head. We provide a fully integrated, full suite digital marketing solution for real estate brokerages and mortgage lenders. So, you know, where you traditionally see the uh, postcard that gets dropped into your mailbox or on your front doorstep, we, you know, while we think that's, that's good practice, we like to augment that with uh, hyper-targeted eyeballs using uh, social and um, pay-per-click ad platforms. So we can hyper-target the types of buyers for homes that um, and and get the get the homes that they're actually looking for in front of them like real active listings. It's the power of digital. We went live with NetSuite um, March 2017, so we had been on QuickBooks for two to three years, and it, it was it was very painful. Um, but you know it was all we could afford when we started. But I could I can kind of share with you the journey there. Um, as we, as we move forward with our presentation here. Um, we have one of the most complex pricing models I've ever seen. I've been in the ERP world for, you know, about 22, 23 years. Um, in, in a prior life, had a big Oracle e-business suite footprint, um, you know, had the help of CTR to help me implement it. Um, I thought our pricing, our advanced pricing back then was complicated. What we have now is extremely complicated, and there's no way that we would have been able to do what we're doing now if we were still on QuickBooks, so we can get into that later. Um, the good thing is that being on NetSuite since 2017, we've been able to, you know, we've pivoted quite a bit. If you heard that term before, we've changed our products and we've changed our pricing model at least three or four times since we went live. And had we not have been on that suite, um, you know, it probably would have paralyzed our business. So, you know, going live with that suite was a, a very good move for us. But that's why Lopo. We were located in Santa Monica for any of you that are in LA. I'm actually in the office today um, so that you, you wouldn't hear my daughter screaming during this webinar. We have another office in Phoenix. It's either, it's either, nowadays, it's either a daughter screaming or a dog barking or a cat prancing across the keyboards, but that's the, that's the day we find ourselves right now. I'm also yeah. in our offices in, uh, in Irvine, California. Um, okay, well, the next topic we want to talk about is, um, so, uh, so Chris, what were the factors that made you decide why Lopo needed to move from QuickBooks? I know you've kind of touched upon that uh, at the moment, but if you can give it a little bit more detail, I would appreciate it. 
Sure. Um, well, we were on on QuickBooks. Um, we had, you know, one of our accounting contractors set it up. You know, I'm, you know, I'm I'm more in the uh, engineering and tech space, even though I've implemented ERP before. But um, our chart of accounts is very very simple. Um, my my partner, who's our CEO, who uh, got his first two companies acquired was used to QuickBooks and we had a very, very simple chart of accounts. So reporting, uh, you know, we didn't have a lot of uh, details or transparency in our financial reporting that we would have liked. And there were a lot of manual, you know, manual steps for our accounting or bookkeeper to have to go through to export the data out of Nets or sorry, um, out of QuickBooks just to get it in the way that we wanted to see it. So you know, that was an exercise in itself and it took time. So we didn't really get to see things in real time. Um, not only that, you know, billing our customers was a manual process. You know, they, our bookkeeper would have to go into, and I can't remember what platform we used back then. She'd have to transact the card in a separate system and then manually enter it into QuickBooks. And, you know, even when we got to a hundred customers at that time, it was just very, very painful. So at that time, you know, I, I was thinking that, you know, our plan was to, you know, double our customer base within a few months. There was no way we were going to be able to do that um, and continue that, that growth trajectory if we didn't find a better solution. So that was one of the major reasons. Um, another thing was that we were also contemplating, you know, obviously like any startup, the, the capital raises that we were going to go through. And, you know, when when our investment banker would ask for, um, you know, our financial reports and you hand over an Excel spreadsheet that, you know, our bookkeeper had to manually tweak, you know, the, it, there were reasons to ask a lot of questions. So, um, you know, I read a, a stat this morning that, I think it was 60 something percent of all IPOs within the last, I, I don't know how many years are on NetSuite. And, you know, with our investment banker today, when we, when we um, went on to NetSuite, the first thing he asked for was give me the, the balance sheet and the, uh, and the P and L straight out of NetSuite untouched because he wanted to see it in its truest form. And now our investment bankers actually have direct access into NetSuite. So it is a trusted source of truth for our financials. Um, when we went live with, or when we went through the implementation, I'd say probably a third of the uh, planning time was just around chart of accounts. And, uh, you know, we, we completely, you know, completely changed the way that we were that we structured our chart of accounts in NetSuite uh, coming from QuickBooks over into NetSuite. Sorry, we got a lot of noise here. Um, so, sorry if you hear that, my partner is going in the server room here. Um, You're fine. So after having done that, you know, we, you know, we, had, we had way more advanced reporting than we had in QuickBooks, obviously. And and uh, you know now that we have an expanded accounting team, the finance team, they're able to go in there and run reports themselves, customize them themselves, and and obviously that that's a good thing for us. Um, you know, you you may have heard me say earlier that we pivoted a few times along the way, and you know we we changed our pricing model several times just to you know we were learning on the fly. You know, we're a startup or we, we like to still think we're a startup. Um, you know, having the, having the flexibility to change the way that we bill our customers um, in NetSuite and not having to do all of that manually was a big thing for us. Um, it was painful to have to convince the customer that we're gonna charge them in a different way, but that's a different story. Um, but being on, on NetSuite gave us those options. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to even think about about the things that we were doing and, and then I obviously a, i know that was a big issue for you chris because you know we had heard over and over again that SaaS's are are hard to to modify and on and on and i know you were really a suspect of some of that in moving to a SaaS model but uh 
I think as you as you saw your billing system come to fruition, uh, you found you were less and less concerned about NetSuite's capability to support your your model rather than take a standard model and and have to work with that. Is that is that your idea? Yeah, that's that's correct. Um, you know, I uh, I'll tell you how we price our product. Um, so we we charge our customers based on tiers and um, and or based on the amount of money that they spend on media. So we spend media dollars on behalf of our customer and some customers will spend 500 a month. And then we have some customers that'll spend upwards of $50,000 a month. And the subscription fee goes up based on that media spend. But that's not the hard part. The um, Where it gets complicated is number one, they prepay that and you know, with digital plat ad platforms, you can never, uh, you know, you can never estimate how much you're actually going to spend because, you know, they they charge you based on the, the amount of clicks that that you get, right? The amount of uh, impressions and clicks people click through the ads. And so at the end of the month, there's a reconciliation process. And, you know, if we overspend or underspent, that reflects, you know, that adjustment is reflected on the next invoice. So that's that's one complexity. But the second complexity that makes us even even harder is that we allow our customers to split their bill. So two realtors could split their bill, or it could be two realtors and a lender, and they all pay for the same service that we're offering. And you know, having to handle those kinds of adjustments along with a prepay and a split makes it completely uh yeah, but it, it, it's it's just another world of complexity. Yeah, so um, the good thing is, yep. Well, I was going to say. Ahead, so you 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 have modified obviously to to meet your billing, but yet you've gone through now two years of updates from NetSuite, and but you still find that your your extensions are supported. You don't you don't. I mean, I'm sure you validate that, but I'm sure, but you find that that's not an issue. So these are these are extensions that because they were uh, written in compliance with NetSuite are are supportable. Is that correct? That's that's right. I mean, we're still somewhat using the vanilla NetSuite. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not like there was a lot of customization to be able to do this. Now, I will say that um, we are about to go live with automating this whole thing. You know, my uh, my colleagues here have been clamoring for us to automate it, but we've changed our pricing model so many times that I've learned from the past. Like you, if we automate it, we change it again, then we have to go build another, you know, rebuild our automation. So we're 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 pretty confident in the way that we're billing our customers now, and um, and the way that we price our product, that we have gone through um, an extensive, uh, you know. Uh, build implementation with CTR to automate that whole thing, and we're excited for that to go live. We're, you know, it's gonna it's gonna totally, you know, re it's gonna reduce our billing time from month to month significantly. Okay. Well, we we've, we've kind of talked about uh, obviously one of the biggest parts of uh, the benefits drive was a, a billing system that supports your model, but. Um, it's been a little off since you've migrated, and you've you've mentioned going off to a, another pricing model and then automating that pricing model. But uh, is there anything else you want to focus on as far as one of the, some of the benefits you derive from uh, from migrating to NetSuite? Well, uh, the fact that my partners log in themselves and don't ask me for data that's a that's a good thing. Um, I mean, it's at the point where they are addicted to just going into their dashboard and clicking the report. So they're seeing the revenue come in in real time, the expenses and, um, you know, that in itself has been huge because I was usually the gateway for all of this. Um, you know, in, in QuickBooks in the early phases of NetSuite, you know, it was really them coming to me and I had to run the reports, get the data to them. So obviously being able to, you know, open it up to several users, you know, obviously the permissions, uh, permission-based users or role-based uh, permissions in NetSuite has been uh, has been big, and you know we've 
we've probably we've tripled our staffing since Jan you know since January 2019. And so when you go through uh, staff expansion like that, you know, and just being able to add users in the system and for them to just hop right in and do what they're doing, it's um, been really easy for us to scale. And and one of those, I mean, you you kind of threw out a word that uh, threw out a phrase that. Uh, was very quick in that you mentioned in real time. Uh, one of the benefits of going to NetSuite is when your when your management looks at their their dashboards, it reflects real time. It's not it's not lagging. Um, it it's it if there's if there's transactions, they can immediately see those, which is nice. And again, you, as you said, there's a lack of calls on, on you because they can actually see it. It's a matter of a little bit of training at the beginning, but the dashboards are fairly intuitive to read and to, um, to, to understand. So certainly that, that, that is a great source other than you know, in the past when you had to share QuickBook or Excel spreadsheets, um, there was always a timing issue. Okay, was that done in the morning? Did I have a transaction in the afternoon? How, how did it reflect? Uh, now, when you pull up a dashboard, you know that it's reflected the, the most current transaction. I would think that that's been a that's been a, a huge uh, plus for for you. It's fun when you look at the revenue going up. It's not fun <laughs> seeing the expenses in real time because I'm the biggest cost. Uh, you know, I'm the biggest cost here. I mean, we're a tech company, so uh, but only the tech budget on the PNL is just the biggest one. <laughs> I know, I know. So, but uh, so I mean, so again, you see the list of benefits, and and certainly as as Chris intimated, the the role based security as he continues to grow his business, there may there may be multiple channels in his business, and and there may you know you may allow want security between those channels, and Netsuite comes with that. That's that's native to to Netsuite. It allows you to have role based. So an accountant and a salesperson may see different dashboards, may see different data on an existing dashboard. That's been a, that's been a, a, a real positive as companies grow because I don't have to worry about redesigning my dashboards or redesigning all that if, if I add a division or add, add a, uh, an, an organization. So that, that's been a big plus. Um, I, I wanna make sure we have time at the end of this half an hour. So I, I thought if you wouldn't mind, Chris, we would just jump into the tips and hints. Because I know you, I know you, uh, you have one big one at the beginning that I want to make sure you have time to expand upon. Yeah, um, sorry, I have to reread this, but yeah, executive buy-in is huge. Um, you know, look, I, 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 I mentioned earlier, I came from a place where we had a big Oracle EBS footprint. Um, you know, several Oracle databases. You know, huge. You know huge servers running this big you know, data warehouse, the OLTP system. And uh, we had a lot of uh, very mature processes internally. Now, fast forward to our own entrepreneurial journey, we're the complete opposite. You know, total cowboys trying to, you know, build a product that somebody's willing to pay money for. And um, thinking about, you know, the uh, back office systems is usually like an afterthought. Um, it's not, it, wasn't really a priority for us, but I've always said that, you know, I, I love to pave the way for growth and NetSuite is the epitome of that. You know, we being able to implement NetSuite, just get our feet wet. And, um, and then as, as our needs grow, being able to stay in that system and continue to mature our usage of the system has been great. But, you know, to get to that point was um, a grueling process. You know, um, being a startup and having an engineer, an, an engineering team that was is, is primarily comes from open source. When they see the five letter word Oracle, the first thing that they think about is very, very expensive and that's for Fortune 500 companies. And, you know, just to go through the exercise to, to convince them that that's not the case and you know this is this is a good thing for our business was what was a long process but um, you know even our, our CEO my partner and I always reflect on those days because those were the most intense fights or debates or battles that we've had 
and we laugh about it now because, you know, our, Howard likes to say that it, you know, having NetSuite has been a competitive advantage for us. So I'm glad that that was a battle that I won. Um, he doesn't like that's to what you always want to hear is that it, it's added to your competitive advantage rather than detracted. And I know that somebody, some people out in the audience are going through that same concern right now. They, they, you know, they want to change. They want to go to a more uniform system that offers a lot of capability, but there's always that concern. Am I, am I, am I, Am I buying a behemoth that has to be fed? Will it reflect the size of my business now and yet allow me to grow to where I'll be in a year, five years, 10 years from now? And I think that uh, I, I think your proof that you can do that, you can manage it, uh, that it, it comes with a lot of work. I mean, you still have to do that work, but um, it's manageable the way that NetSuite allows you to start off relatively simply and, and grow in complexity within the NetSuite group. So you don't have to change an application five years from now because you're 10 times bigger. That That is not what NetSuite sells. So I, I think- Yeah, that once you get executive buy-in, you know, mm -hmm. and you get the commitment uh, from the executive team, then everyone should be all in, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the thing is, is that when you're implementing a system like this, it, it, it draws a lot of resources you know, internally. So you, you got to make sure that that um, that buy in is there, that commitment's yep. there. Yep. So, uh, we celebrated when we went live, though. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we talked we, we talked about next steps and uh, and cer certainly you're already doing that. You're already enhancing your billing and pricing model. You, you are looking at possibly ex ex expanding into the planning and budgeting as you continue to grow. You're, you are looking at uh, in integrations between Salesforce, Zendesk, and NetSuite. Uh, and again, both of those are, are partners of NetSuite, which means that they do offer integrations uh, with standards. So um, I think that we're, I think that we're, you know, I think your growth is, is at, at the same point that NetSuite's capable of, of allowing, of, uh, uh, accentuating your growth. Um, but I, I thought, is there anything else? I mean, I want to make sure that we, we're pretty close to the time, but I want to make sure we have a couple of minutes at the end for questions. Is there anything else you wanted to focus on before we get to questions? Um, no, I think, you know, look, it's, it's in the slides, right? We, we're, we use Zendesk a lot. We've got probably almost a hundred people in operations are all in Zendesk and our sales team loves Salesforce. We don't have it yet. Um, we plan to start an implementation in January, mm -hmm. but again, um, when I, I'm going back to saying that, you know, I like to pave the way for growth, well, Zendesk and Salesforce is already native integrations in the NetSuite. And so once we get Salesforce online, you know, and we build our integration between Zendesk and NetSuite, like all these systems are going to sing together. And, um, you know, it, it, it's not really a huge effort to, to integrate them because of these native integrations. So mm -hmm. I'd say we're probably like 20% into our implementation of NetSuite, you know, um, and not because of um, capabilities. I think it's kind of our culture, right? We don't, we don't really do, we're startups, so we don't really do like a formal, uh, you know, budgeting and planning exercise. Um, you know, I think that's going to change real soon here. And we probably will start using that functionality within NetSuite. Um, I'm afraid of that because I'm the biggest spender here, but you know we'll <laughs> we'll have to get through it. But anyway, like feel free to ask any questions. Um, you know, yeah, um, any of you. Adam, do you do you, do you have questions sitting out there? Uh, we don't have any questions in the queue, um, you know, but I would ask Chris uh, just to clarify on one side, you know, you said you consider yourself a startup. Can, can you illuminate for the team where you started your process from, uh, you know, employee size um, and, and growth trajectory and, and where you've gotten to now and just kind of talk about that growth just a little bit just so we have, uh, we can kind of see that, that view. Sure. We started the company with four people in a living room in uh, Marina del Rey. 
Um, that's when we, I remember clearly when we, we, we uh, started using QuickBooks. Um, and then we grew our staff to about probably 15 people and moved to a small office in Venice Beach. And that's when we made the, the uh, decision to go to NetSuite. And, um, you know, we had two users in NetSuite, you know, myself and our bookkeeper. Um, fast forward, we have 170 employees now in four different countries. And, um, you know, our revenue uh, just since January 2019 to now has almost quadrupled. So, um, you know, and that, that, that growth over the last however many months, 18 to 22 months, has uh, been easy to go through on the billing side. I'd be lying to you if I said it was easy everywhere else, but um, when it comes to billing and our financial reporting, it's been really easy because everything's just being run out of that suite. Yeah, it, it, it's nice when you think about, I mean, that, that's one of the reasons why you buy an ERP system is because it, it can handle your entire enterprise process. There may be elements of it that you're not using yet and you may grow into it later. I mean, you know, NetSuite does come with an e-commerce uh, bolt-on. It does come with a lot, of, a lot of features, but yet you, don't, you didn't have to do them when you were 15 people. You didn't have to do it when you were 30 people, but you may be looking at it now that you're almost 180 people. And so that's that's nice. It's not like every few years you're migrating to another you're migrating to another application. So I think that that's that alone has been uh, a big point for you guys. And I remember when you were 15 people. I remember the conversations that uh, that CTR had with with you about your the ability to to implement and to to maintain and then to grow. And we've been you know luckily we've been with you for that entire. Path and we continue to hopefully be able to support you as you grow. But it's, um, it's, it's nice when you buy a package that does what it says it's going to do and that you can start small and grow with, with the organization. And of course, NetSuite has grown itself significantly since that time. Um, and so not have to maintain the infrastructure for it. Yeah. You know, oh, that's like even EBS bigger. was huge, but, but <laughs> even with QuickBooks, you know, I'd worry about whether we would lose that that virtual machine that was running QuickBooks, right? So, well, I remember in the past you had multiple DBAs, you had multiple developers, you had multiple everything was multiple uh, when you were in the EBS world, and so it, it's hard because you have to give up a little control, but you also get a lot of value for that because you're what you're doing, what your business is being a CTO. I mean, you're you're way beyond the back office applications. I mean, yes, you have to keep a finger in them, but you're way beyond that. So it's nice that you, you don't have to still focus on that and grow your business. You can, you can grow your business, grow, grow the technology, grow the complexity without having to worry about, okay, is my ser does my server need to be changed? Do I need to, to do the, do I need to change this? You know, do I have to update this or update that? It, it, it comes with that. And that's what comes with all of those features, which, which, is, which is really nice. Um, I know we're, we're, we're over our two o'clock ending and, uh, I did want to mention we will be creating a recording. Uh, we have created a recording. It will be available. I, we will mail it out to anybody in attendance now, but we will also um, probably post it on our, on our website as well as make it available through LinkedIn. Some of you came in through LinkedIn, so we'll make it available as well. Um, it is a Zoom recording, so it, it pretty much reflects. So the good, the good parts and the bad parts will also be reflected, all my ah, ah, ah. And all that will also probably be reflected in there. So be patient. Uh, any, anything else, either from Adam or from Chris? Good here. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Good. Thank yes. you. Thank you, Chris. No we problem. I'll it. see if I can dig up my notes on uh, how to convince your partner that NetSuite <laughs> is not only for Fortune 500 companies. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really big. I'm sure a lot of people that are attending this session <laughs> would like to have the secret on how they tell their CEO or CFO, or see something, how, how to spend the money now and get the benefit in a year. Um, you know, obviously the nice thing about it is it doesn't take a year. It take, you know, and, and usually in a, in, in, you know, in a very short period of time, you get to benefit from the fruits of your work. So that's, that's a big plus here. Uh, it's, not an e, it's, not a, uh, it's not an ERP application, uh, an EBS application, I mean. Um, okay, well again, 
Thank you very much for your time and thank you to the audience for attending. We appreciate it and we appreciate you staying up, staying in, and listening. And uh, anything else, uh, dkenny at ctrworld.com. We'd be glad to answer questions. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Bye -bye.